We were all renting in different places in Santa Rosa. I mean, we hadn't bought, the market was high. We're looking at homes that are, you know, a median of over 500,000. And where do you move to that's affordable? When we knew that my oldest was still gonna live at home, we decided, well, it's stupid. We're all throwing away this rent. And my mom's rent actually too, at the same time was still going up and up and up. She was paying like $1,900 for a one bedroom. So between, between us all, we were paying over $4,000 a month in rent, which is insane. So we were looking for solutions. So <laughs> here we are. <laughs> we actually bought this house specifically because we knew we would be able to convert the detached garage. We just wanted a way to make it feel like we each had our own, our own place. This was a garage. It was like a one and a half car garage. There were, it was like a sliding garage door. You couldn't park a car in there. There was shelves and it was literally just a storage garage. <laughs> She's... Dewey's gonna be the star. He's gonna be, yeah. He, ooh, he found a friend. <laughs> This is great here though because you really can see it does feel like almost neighbors you have a shared well that and that was when we were talking about if we were going to do this then I needed to have my you know life with my family and she had her place where she could also still bring friends over and we wanted that sort of one patio separation and <laughs> one patio yeah. one patio separation and very good boundaries Wow, you immediately noticed the natural light. Yeah. yeah. Wow. So that was a must have. Um, and also in terms of, and you can hear the difference in the, the, I mean, it's noisy outside. We live in a busy, we're living downtown. So this wall here is where the doors were. I still wanted it to feel like it could maintain the look of a garage because there's no gate, you know, so people don't just come walk, <laughs> you know what I mean? Walking in through the back gate. We didn't want big windows here to let in more light, so hence the skylight, so that we had a lot of natural light. I had to have it be light. I mean, it was really just a garage, so it was nine months from start to finish, I think, in the process. And the fires happened in the middle, and it delayed everything. We had plans from an architect, we were ready to go, and then the fires happened. And then we also heard because of the fires that they were going to waive some of the fees for the utility hookups and some of the other city taxes that we would have had to pay. We saved over $18,000 when they put that into place. I mean, we still paid about $5,000 for building fees. You know, it's not, it's not like this is a cheap endeavor, even though it helps us in the long run in terms of, you know, we're sharing cost of living here. Well, the most, the best thing about this kitchen is this little fan. <laughs> the electrician initially told us, because there are all these requirements about movement of air and what kind of, we couldn't accommodate a larger fan, the electrician thought. Well, after everything was done and the fan is already in, the contractor says, you can get a larger fan. And I'm like, oh no. <laughs> this is staying. <laughs> and my friends love this fan, so. You have friends over. Mm -hmm. Oh gosh, yes. Yeah. You have a name for it. The tea tour. Tea and a tour. Tea and a tour, yeah. You come for tea and a tour, and it, the tour lasts seven seconds, <laughs> and then you stay for tea. <laughs> I can accommodate, include, I'd say four guests is the best. Three on the couch, I'm in one chair, and the last guest is in the other chair, but we could put someone on the stool. But I don't like to feel crowded. My optimal socializing mm -hmm. group is two or three people anyway. So. And that was another thing I think too, in terms of design choices and making sure she had an eating bar. The original plans, we, there was a, like a dining table here. But again, it, the space is small. So if you have a table in your living room, again, you're sort of sharing all this space with the, the separation that she wanted. So by putting that in, she could feel like I'm eating in my kitchen and now I'm going to go watch TV in my living room and then I, I'm going to go to bed in my bedroom. I and... do not have friends for meals. <laughs> my sister, she had breakfast with me a couple of days. We sat here. 
I have oh, yeah. two burners. This is a microwave convection oven. So you could bake. Have I baked? No. no. <laughs> the refrigerator, it had to be at least this size. And it's a full refrigerator. I mean, it's, I don't need any more than this. I've got plenty of space. I need to go shopping. <laughs> I don't have a dishwasher. Do I need a dishwasher? I use the same bowl and plate. I've got china. And so this is my pantry. What do I need? It's just me. Yeah. And if there's something, I mean, honestly, I mean, there is a whole house next yeah. door. If she really wants to use a dishwasher, she can bring her glasses, glasses over. Okay, so my bedroom, my closet is huge. This is all storage. And then up and from floor to ceiling. And all of my clothes and shoes fit in here. And then I have a little attic. I had to get new bedroom furniture because I had a giant, I had a king size bed. I got new furniture for my bedroom and that was probably a good thing to do anyway. But I got things that would just fit my needs. So this is like for extra sheets and towels stuff. And the cat somehow manages to get rid of it. Sometimes. I don't know how that is. But. At first, we had a really small shower. And the contractor said, we need to think about what happens if you get older, if, if I live to be older, really older, and you need assistance in the shower. Because it was literally like a three, you know, it was like three by three shower. And so we pushed the wall in this way a little bit and back that way into the kitchen just enough so she could have a standard size to sort of flip-flop where the toilet was located and the, and the sink was located to get it to fit so she had a standard size shower. This one to save space and not having a door that pulls open because then it comes into one of the rooms. Um, so it just it gives her separation if she wants it. Her her sister actually came and spent the night on the couch, so yeah, <laughs> so she can have an overnight guest, you know. Um, although she'd have to open the door to get to the bathroom, but just I just really felt like I needed to have the ability. I've I've lived here nine months now, and I have never closed that door. <laughs> However, it's it's there, and sometimes if the young people are out on the patio and I don't want to listen to yeah. them, yeah. I could close it. Yeah. It's just the feeling of it yeah. Yeah. that I can separate. I mean, this is a cocoon. And um, I needed to have a desk. I originally thought, I'm going to have a desk right here. And the contractor said, well, let me build you a desk. We covered just about every inch of space in here to make it usable. This is 380 square feet. And so it, she went, you know, 2,000 or so square, 1,700 uh, square feet? Uh, 1,700 square feet in my home with, that I have with my husband. It was just a very unfortunate situation that he died as young as he did. I knew it was time to come up here. I gave away a thousand books. I mean, it was a big place. When I went to select my books, I'm like, okay, why am I carrying all these books around with me? But everything else that I really wanted is here. Um, but it, it does feel like a good amount of space though. I guess I was picturing it at attached garage mm -hmm. and that changes everything, I think. You know, the fact that it's not. It does yeah. feel more like a neighbor or something. Yeah, exactly. That's I'm as much. close to these people on this side as I am to them. In fact, I'm actually closer to them. To, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, I don't go there without texting or knocking because Stacy works from home two days a week, so I don't want to interrupt. Mm -hmm. There's also stuff going on in there. I don't want to just... <laughs> I mean, suppose they're having a fight. And the mother-in-law is... You don't want to do that to <laughs> And they always knock. You know, those I think are just respectful, neighborly boundaries. You wouldn't just walk into your neighbor's house. So, this is our laundry room in here. And this was already here. It was here when we came here. I don't think it's permitted. Um, sh um, but we're. <laughs> so, I mean, we have a stock. You know, it, it's just a laundry room. 
but it will still be part of the plan. So the idea is that you can both come in without bothering each other. Yeah. And it wasn't like we, it's not like we have a garage now where we can put a washer and dryer in the garage. Exactly. All right, we have a little storage unit back there. Um, I have a little one for tools over here. For some reason, we tend to like our spaces, you know what I mean? Like we have the, the coffee area and the dining area. And again, we still have and young adults here, so this was sort of like the quieter space here. And you kind of make your way during the day, right, to the, you follow the sun and the heat of the day, you've got this nice patio where you can kind of sit and eat lunch or dinners. And then we built a new deck or rebuilt this deck just off of our family room. And it's away from her as well. So it's, even though she says she stays up late, if it's, you know, really late, we can all just sort of hang out and chat and it's lit if it's later at night and we could completely <laughs> separate these spaces with a renter or something that you could e easily reinvent this so and li little inconveniences like parking, <laughs> parking <is laughs> one hour parking is a daily a daily issue i mean it really looks like a parking lot it's not very attractive when you walk up here but it's again i mean really we have five adults that have working college you know what i mean i mean our vehicles are pretty much a necessity for us as long as we're serving water. Once a week we do this. Tea and a tour. Tea and a tour. Water and a tour in this case. Water and a tour. We so, come into the hug, the hug, the hug house, right? I the call this, this is a, it's the hug house. I spent a lot of time in here. I never felt confined. What I felt was I was living in a hug. I mean, from a financial perspective, this keeps all the money in one source mm -hmm. and I get to see what I would have left to them working for them and for me. That's financial but that doesn't work unless you're in a relationship that is supportive of everybody. This is one reason why we did this. It's, it's like an urban compound, <laughs> small urban compound, a family compound. But livable and very yeah, livable.